Canix has a new inventory availability report with new default views that are preset depending on how you need to view your inventory for your function in your facility. If you open up this default view section here at the top, you'll see a report for all. This is the previous inventory availability report with all of the columns available to you, both all just normal active packaged inventory as well as all of your inventory available for sale summarized. In your orders to fill default views, you'll see the amount of ordered quantities that don't have a matching amount of allocated packages on those sales orders. So if there's any difference between the ordered quantities for an item and added packages for an item, you'll see the quantity to fill in the unfilled section of this report. Available to sell is all of the inventory that's been marked available for sale in your packages table. I'll go through in a second how you can manage that either automatically for metric facilities or manually for either metric or standalone facilities. And in active inventory, these are all of the columns for active packages in total. It doesn't matter whether they've been marked available for sale or whether they're just packaged and awaiting test results or other purposes. The main purposes of each of these reports is maybe you're a fulfillment team that needs to know how many orders still need to be filled or maybe you know, need to know how many packages need to be produced to fulfill the number of orders that are still available. Available to sell is useful for sales reps to be able to know what items and the quantities where those items have been marked available for sale, meaning they're either packaged and ready to go, or maybe they've passed testing depending on your license. An active inventory may be good for just people who are managing the inventory in general in a facility. Maybe you need to know the amount of bulk biomass that can go into either vape cartridges or other manufacturing processes. Or maybe you don't need to manage this available for sale inventory and all active packaged inventory of a specific item name is ready to go out of your facility. If that's the case, you can use active inventory if you don't plan on managing this available for sale flag. And we'll go ahead and walk through how you can utilize that flag now. In your active packages table under inventory packages, you have an option in one of your columns here to see the marked available for sale inventory. That's shown by this green check mark in this column. And you can deselect any packages that do not need to be marked available for sale by going to actions, toggle availability for sale. That will remove that option or that indicator in this report as well as remove these quantities for these items from your marked for sale columns in your inventory availability report. As you scroll back over, you'll see that these columns or that these check marks have been removed, but you can select them again, go to actions, toggle availability for sale to manually mark those as available for sale again. For any non-metric facilities, this is how you manage your inventory that is ready for sale. Or for Canadian facilities, this is how you manage which inventory is considered packaged. For metric facilities, this can be done automatically based on your test passed results coming from metric. As you scroll over here to the right, you'll be able to see your lab results and your latest lab test. As you get lab results that say test pass for these particular packages, we'll automatically mark these as available for sale if indicated in your facility management. If you scroll down to admin facility management and you're an admin in your facility, you should be able to select any of your facilities here. Scroll down and you'll see this mark tested packages as sellable. If you hover over this, you'll see that uh, we can automatically mark your packages as available for sale when we see a test pass status come through from metric as the testing status on this package. If this is selected, that means that we'll automatically mark that as available for sale. But if you unmark this option, then this will mean that you have to manually manage this inventory as available for sale like we did in the packages table. Now that we know how to manage our marked for sale inventory, we can go back to our inventory availability report and you can hover over each of these columns to see what each column represents. In the available to sell report, you'll see that this available for sale column is the amount of packages that have been marked available for sale minus any of the ordered quantities on the line on sales orders for this item name. Starting at the beginning here, total for sale are all of your active packages with that green check mark for meaning it, that it's marked for sale. Your ordered column is all of the quantities on sales orders 
that are marked as created, approved, or filled. In these sales orders, since there, it doesn't matter if packages have been added to these orders or not, this is just the total quantity that you can find on those orders, regardless of whether there's packages or not. Available for sale, as I mentioned previously, is just total for sale minus all of those ordered quantities to get your available for sale quantity. Active inventory is very much the same, except for it doesn't matter whether those packages have that green check mark, that marked for sale flag on them or not. This will show you all of your active packaged quantities for this line item or this item name. This ordered column should match the ordered column from the previous report that we were just looking on, since it's the total amount of ordered quantities on sales orders that have been marked as created, approved, or filled. And again, available is total minus ordered to get the available amount. Again, not uh, no regards to whether this package has been marked for sale or not. There's a fourth column in this report called allocated. These are all of the packages that have been allocated to sales orders. It doesn't matter again if these packages have been marked available for sale or not. It's just any package that has been added to a sales order that's marked as created, approved, or filled. You can select this columns bar on the right to add or remove any columns that you don't need from your view. So if you don't care about the number of packages that have actually been added, you no longer have to show that in your view. And under save, save view as, you can give it a new name. Give it a description. And then you have a few options here. Since there's a facility filter here, you can decide that your default facility filter will always just be the facility that you've navigated to here. Or whatever facility that you have saved this with, uh, you can save this view by selecting this option. You can also make this your default view. So if you want this to always be the view that comes up when you click inventory availability, then if you select this option, it won't bring up any of these other views by default. After this has been saved, you'll see all of your saved views in your custom views here. It'll be seen across all of your facilities, but it will only be seen for your user and is not shareable with other users at the moment. From this view here, you can also start sales orders. So whether you want to select certain items that you know are for sale that you want to sell, and you'll see that we have three selected here to then go to actions, create a sales order with three items. This will pre-fill our sales order with the pricing from our previous order and with one quantity. However, this can be updated. You can add packages from here. And once you've added a delivery date and a customer, you can save this order. You can also decide which packages you want to add to an order from here. If you click on these item names, you'll see a list of all of your active packages packages that have been marked for sale, all of the orders that have this line item or this item name as a line item, and all of the packages that have been allocated to orders. So if we start at this total column here, you'll see that these packages are listed from the earliest created date down to the most recent created date. If it says allocated, this means that it has been allocated to a sales order, which you can click on here and go to that sales order. Or if it says available, that means that it's uh, an active package that has no, not yet been added to a sales order, not yet allocated. And you can select that to be able to save these selections to create a sales order from. After these have been saved, we can save selection. Close our menu here. And since these are our 001 items, we'll select this option so that we can have a sales order beginning from here. I'll select one more item that we want to create the sales order with. We'll sell some half bounds and sell from this package. As I save that selection, I'll go ahead and select that item to mark it as my sales order item. And under actions, I'll create my sales order. As you see here, my two items that I had selected get pre-filled, as well as the packages that I had selected from those side panels get added automatically. The quantities from these packages will sum, on here, sum here on these line items, as well as the prices will pre-fill again from our, our most recent order for this item. 
In order to complete this, we just create our customer or add an existing customer, add our delivery date, and then we'll be able to create this order.